evening folks. Welcome to another midweek Bible study. Thank you for joining with us. Just a few announcements to keep you up to date. Uh, the wee prayer emails, if anyone would like a wee copy of the prayer letter email to them, please uh, let me know and you'll have more information. Uh, prayer requests will be kept quite general for uh, what you're going out in public in this format so you get more detail on the prayer letter. And then just to say there are some questions, they'll be on the Facebook and the website uh, to follow up to the Bible study tonight. Uh, we're having the interactive Bible study at half eight and if you'd like to be part of that do let me know uh, any week. The, the ladies are having a prayer meeting uh, tomorrow night and uh, I think 13 women have now signed up to do that by Zoom. I think they could comfortably take another five. So any more women would like to sign up for that, please uh, let Lorna or, or Cheriff know about that. Then also, just to say the men's prayer meeting, we hope to do it on Friday night via Zoom. And uh, so far, no men have signed up. Men were lagging behind the women. So please, men, let me know if you're able to be part of that on Friday night at nine o'clock and uh, be able to have a time of seeing each other and praying uh, together in that. So we're going to come and we're going to be looking at Jonah chapter 4 tonight. We're going to finish the book of Jonah and uh, then next week we're God willing going to start a series in the book of First John and that will be next week we'll start First John. So we look at Jonah 4 tonight. Let's just commit our time to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come again. It is now, Father, quite a number of weeks since we were able to meet together. Yet, we thank you that through technology and more importantly through your Holy Spirit, we are united in Christ even this evening. And Heavenly Father, as we come and we consider this book of Jonah, just pray that again. We would see something more of the greatness and the wonder of our God. And Lord, that we would just understand more appropriately how we should respond to you God you're the God who rules over all you're the God of mercy and compassion the God who is patient with your people and the God who will see your purposes fulfilled and father thank you for that encouragement that wonderful truth in these challenging days forgive us for our many sins wash and cleanse us even this evening in Jesus precious name amen so Jonah chapter 4 and we'll read from verse 1. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly and he was angry. And he prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, is not this what I said when I was yet in my country? That is why I made haste to flee to Tarshish. For I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relenting from disaster. Therefore now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Do you do well to be angry? Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade till, till he should see what would become of the city. Now the Lord, had a, the Lord God appointed a plant, and made it come up over Jonah, that it might be a shade over his head, to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was exceedingly glad because of the plant. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the plant so that it withered. When the sun rose, God appointed a scorching east wind, and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah, so that he was faint. And he asked that he might die, and said, It's better for me to die than live. But God said to Jonah, Do you do well to be angry for the plant? And he says, Yes, I do well to be angry, angry enough to die. And the Lord said, You pity the plant for which you did not labour, nor did you make it grow, which came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should not I pity Nineveh, that great city, in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left, and also much cattle. Amen. Uh, 
I'm going to title our study tonight, Jonah's Misdirected Concern. And you remember chapter 3 ended with a real high note in God having mercy on the people of Nineveh. They all repented, they turned to God, and God was merciful to them. Jonah, as a prophet, despite his initial reluctance, reluctance to obey, he has been a very successful prophet. He's brought God's word and great change has happened in the city. But that's not the end of the story. And if Jonah ended at the end of chapter 3, we would say it's a very good and a lovely book, a successful book. But that's not how it ends. And the first thing we see in chapter 4 is Jonah's angry prayer in verses 1 to 4. Jonah was exceedingly angry at God's mercy. It says that in verse 1. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly and he was angry. He was hopping mad. He was furious that God had shown mercy to these people. Yet Jonah was not surprised by what had happened. His knowledge of God had caused him to expect this. It's tremendous how he describes her. And he prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, is not this what I said when I was yet in my country? That is why I made haste to flee to Tarshish. For I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relenting from disaster. What a lovely description of God. And as we pray and pray in the current situation and praying that God would be merciful to us as a nation, let's remember what God is like. He is merciful. He is gracious. He is slow to anger. He is abounding in steadfast love. And he is a God who relents from disaster. And so when we pray, we can pray with great confidence to this gracious, merciful God. There's terrible hypocrisy here in Jonah, complaining about God's mercy. Because Jonah himself had benefited so much from God's mercy. He indeed had run away from God. He ended up in that storm. He ended up being cast into the sea and God sent the fish. He was there in the belly of the fish three days and three nights and he was rescued from that. God was very merciful to him. And I think Jonah also, he's got great arrogance in the manner in which he speaks to God. He forgets what he owes God. He forgets how great God is. And he shouldn't have spoken in this way. And it's interesting here. Jonah's anger leads to depression in verse 3. Therefore now, O Lord, please take my life from me. For it's better for me to die than to live Depression is a very challenging subject and it affects many people. It's important to realise that there are many causes to depression. And different people's depression can be caused because of different reasons. But one reason which can cause depression is a self-centred heart, which is not right in its priorities. A heart out of step with God can lead to depression. A heart of anger, a heart of hatred, can lead to depression. God challenges the wrong attitude of Jonah here in verse 4. The Lord said to him, Do you do well to be angry? But it appears that Jonah is not receptive to this rebuke. But we need to consider if what really gets us down, what makes us anger, angry, is it a righteous anger? There is such a thing as when Jesus cleared the temple and Jesus was angry at the hardness of the hearts of the religious leaders at different times. There is a righteous anger. And we need sometimes more of a righteous anger. Think of Billy, babies being killed in the womb. We need a righteous anger, anger then. But so often I fear that our anger is not righteous. What makes you angry? Is it righteous? Maybe some of the time, times where we can be so miserable is we still have anger inside us that we need God to deal with. So we have Jonah's angry prayer in verses 1 to 4. And then we have Jonah's concern for a plant in verses 5 to 8. 
Jonah seeks to find a comfortable seat to be able to sit and to watch what happens to Nineveh. It appears in verse 5 that he's still hoping that God would destroy the city. He is wanting a ringside seat to see fireworks from heaven and the city destroyed. Jonah's heart is hard. And when people refuse to learn from God's voice, often they will have to learn from difficult experiences that God will bring across their path. Jonah wouldn't learn the easy way by listening to the voice of God. Now he would listen or learn the painful way through the voice of experience. God causes a plant to grow here and to shelter Jonah from the sun in verse 6. Grew up very quickly. Jonah was happy with this. God then, in verse 7, causes a worm to come and to attack the plant, so the plant dies. In verse 7. Then verse 8, God causes a scorching east wind to come and, and the sun, which was hot, to, to burn up Jonah. And this caused Jonah to again to speak of how he wanted to die at the end of verse 8. And here we see a terrible contradiction in Jonah. He doesn't care about the many people in Nineveh. But he cares so much about a plant that has died. And the question that you and I need to consider is, what do we get this concerned about? What annoys you? What annoys me? Are there material things that are more important to us than people and their salvation. Jonah's concern was in the wrong place. And I wonder is that true of you and is that true of me at times? And I know it is. What are the things that you get caught up about? What things are more important to you than the salvation of people's souls? Are there hobbies? Are there pets? Are there interests you have? Is it your job? Is it making money? What is more important to you? Comfort? Popularity? What's more important to you than the salvation of souls? Jonah was more concerned over a plant than the salvation of these people. Jesus said to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And I think when Jesus says that, he surely means not just in our own lives, but surely he means that in the lives of others. We would seek for others to be able to submit to Christ as King and to know his righteousness through trusting in Jesus through faith. That should be the priority in our life. That should be so important to us. We should be praying for that. We should be seeking to share God's word. We should help practically for that to happen. Are you seeking first God's kingdom and his righteousness in your life and in the lives of others? So we're seeing... Jonah's angry prayer. We've seen Jonah's concern for a plant. And then thirdly we see God's challenge to Jonah in verses 9 to 11. And God confronts Jonah with the fact that he was more concerned about the wrong things in verse 9. He asks Jonah a question. He says there in verse 9, do you do well to be angry for the plant? And what God is seeking to do here is to get Jonah to think this through. To take time to consider the implications of his attitude. God wants Jonah to face up to what is wrong and his attitude which was wrong. And God makes it clear here about Jonah's inconsistency. In verse 10 God says, you pity the plant for which you did not labour, nor did you make it grow, which came into being in a night, and perished in a night. And should I not should not I pity Nineveh, the great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons, who do not know their right hand from their left, and also much cattle? God is saying to Jonah, you care for a plant which you haven't cared for or provided for. And really the problem here is Jonah is accusing God of being too caring. And God said, should I not care for this great city? 
He says 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left. Was that the po total population of the city? Or was that the children of the city? We don't know. But it was a great number. But God is loving and compassionate toward these people. Should he not be loving and compassionate for these people he's watched over for years? As he does of all people. And should God not be more concerned about people than Jonah which should be concerned about a plant? In the end, God challenges Jonah to be at least concerned about the, the many cattle. Look at the end of verse 11. And also much cattle. Ah, oh, Jonah, if you don't care for the people, at least care for the cattle. <laughs> yes, I think there's a bit of sarcasm coming here from God. And there's a challenge for each of us here to face up to our wrong priorities, our wrong concerns in life. God is not indifferent to our wrong priorities. God cares about when we are concerned about the wrong things. Will you face up to these? Will you really come before God honestly at a time of prayer? And will you say to God, I know my priorities have been wrong. I know I haven't been concerned for the salvation of him. I know I haven't been praying for people enough in my own home. I know I haven't been going to the prayer meeting enough. I know I haven't signed up for the women's prayer meeting. I haven't signed up for the men's prayer meeting this week when I should. Are you serious about the loss? Are you concerned about the loss? Or are you more concerned about having a comfortable time and just meeting the needs of your home. God doesn't want you to be indifferent to this. God's not indifferent to this. God is confronting Jonah with this face to face. And one of the reasons is that God wasn't finished with Jonah either. In the book of Kings, Second Kings I think it is, it speaks of Jonah again and God using him. God was equipping him. God was preparing him for what was ahead. But Jonah had to face up to this. His wrong priorities, his wrong concerns. Not having compassion for the loss. You and I need to do that as well. We're going to come to prayer and just maybe let me mention some people to pray for. Three people in hospital. Uh, you'll get more details about who these people are if you get the prayer letter via email. Bertie, Rosie and Pearl. Each of these people need our, our prayers. Pray for the, the lonely at this time, for people living by themselves. And uh, As time goes on, it's getting harder. I know certainly I'm getting harder, but for people living by themselves, it must be so much harder. So pray for the lonely. Pray for the unsaved. Pray for those in whom all this is happening around them. And so much stuff we read about and see on our TV screen, and still their hearts aren't turning to God. Pray for the unsaved. Pray for your hard-hearted neighbour, your hard-hearted family member. Pray for the unsaved in these days. Pray for doctors and nurses. Pray for care workers and others who work for the health service. Pray that God would protect mm -hmm. them and give them the grace in these challenging days. Pray for our political leaders. Give thanks for the recovery of Boris Johnson. Pray for him. Pray for his cabinet and the health minister, Matt Hancock, and others important decisions. Pray for the Robin Swan locally, for Arlene Foster and Michelle O'Neill. Pray that they would indeed have be guided to do what is right and they not be caught up in party politics uh, in these days. So pray about that and pray that people will indeed be wise in the decisions they make. Pray for the ongoing ministry of our church, the morning devotions, uh, the midweeks, the Sunday services as I prepare these. Uh, do pray for myself in that, that I would be guided and directed by God and, and deliver that in the power of the Holy Spirit. Pray for the children's talks. Give thanks for the many people who are helping out in that now. It's so encouraging. And do pray for those folk. And pray for our children, our young people, in these very unusual days for them as well. And so pray for an increased prayerfulness among God's people. That's so important to pray for. Uh, pray for the women's prayer meeting, the men's prayer meeting. Pray that indeed believers would be serious about this and increasingly committed to prayer in these times. We have more time. Most of us do. May we use it wisely in our homes. 
Pray for Kirk's session and committee and acting as buddies and, and others involved in this. But Kirk's session and committee men, just pray that God would guide how the elders and committee men would fulfil their responsibilities. There's still much we have to do and think about and just we need to work out how that can, should be done. So pray about that for wisdom uh, in these days. And then just a few uh, overseas points. Pray for FISPA. Uh, there's a lockdown in Kenya which is really biting hard and VISPA is involved in giving out food and that and it's a very challenging day. So pray that those who most need help will get it and pray that God will use these challenging days there too to draw people to Christ. Aisha, great danger in the slums of Delhi and, and the situation there. And, uh, you can see it on the news, it's not good. So do pray for... Uh, Kieran and Freddie and all the folk involved in Asha, that they would be kept safe and know God's grace. And then pray for our fruit and veg program, which we do in Jordan. And pray about that. Uh, the folk in the refugee camps it's, are particularly finding it difficult. So do pray for that situation as well. There's, there's great need worldwide. So a lot of things to pray for. And if you got the prayer letter, uh, pull it out and have a look at it and guide you more about what needs prayed for. Uh, just one final thing. Uh, we have someone who has come to profess faith in the last few weeks. There have actually a couple in the last month or so. So that's really encouraging to pray for these new young uh, spiritual babes that God will guide and direct and protect them. So I'll lead you in prayer. And after that I can encourage you to look at the questions or to take more time in praying. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, forgive us for when we get so caught up with our own comfort like Jonah, rather than be concerned for those who are lost. And Lord, give us a, a deepening burden, Father, for those who are not saved in these days. People, Father, who are real in real danger of, Father, of going to hell. Lord, have mercy, we pray upon them. And Lord, have mercy upon us and cause us to be a more prayerful people at this time and to have a real burden for those who need to be saved. Father, we thank you for the work that's being done and, and how we can share your word in the morning devotions and the children's talks and midweek and the Sunday services going out to so many. And we pray that that would continue. We pray it would even reach more people, Father. And Father, we just pray that you just guide us as a church guide session and committee in all we do, Father. And that we would indeed be, Father, proactive in seeking your will being done in these days. Father, we do pray for those who aren't well. We pray for Bertie and for Pearl. We pray you be very close to them, Father, and to Rosie as well. And Lord, just meet all their needs, both physically and spiritually at this time. Be with their families who are concerned too. Be their peace, their comfort, their strength. We pray, Father, for FISPA and the situation there in Kenya, Lord. Bless Helen and George and all the folk there. We pray that those, Father, involved in the school and that will have their needs met. And, Father, in the wider community, oh, Lord, we just pray that you would be merciful in these days. We pray, too, for India, Father, and for Aisha and the work that they're involved in. Bless them, Lord, and so much need around them. Give them your grace and your help. And we do pray, Father, that indeed also you would just, Father, bless the fruit and veg program that we're involved in, Lord, in these days. So, gracious God, undertake, we pray. Be merciful, Father, to our nation. Father, hold back this hand of this, this virus, Lord. Be merciful, we pray. But, Lord, also draw people to Christ and salvation in great numbers, we would ask. Thank you for those who have come to profess faith in this last month or so, Lord, be with them and bless them and encourage them. Protect them from the evil one and lead them on to yourself. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. So I encourage you to have our look at the questions or continue in short time in praying for the needs of our congregation, community and their world at this time. God bless.